they're, they've got NASA's backing. They've got doing it with like, you know, a day's worth of cash flow from Tesla or something. Just go out there and say, I am a sport. These other guys, you know, we get 500 Spartans to get to, to Mars. This isn't just another Elon Musk headline. Hidden beneath star bases, rising towers, and the fiery glow of rocket tests lies something far more consequential. From billion-dollar Pentagon deals to the mysterious explosion of Ship 36, and even China's silent sprint toward Neptune, there's a new space race unfolding. But unlike the Cold War, this one's built on reusable giants, nuclear resilience, and silent orbital warfare. Why is Elon's Block 3 so different? And what does it mean when even Neptune becomes a battleground? The answers are here, scattered across a series of strange and powerful events. Let's dive in. Boeing's $2.8 billion ESS contract. Boeing landing a $2.8 billion contract from the U.S. Space Force might sound like business as usual, but this deal is anything but ordinary. It's not for standard communication satellites. It's for ESS, short for Evolved Strategic SATCOM, a new class of satellites built to operate in one of the most extreme conditions imaginable, a nuclear war. These aren't just signal relays, they're hardened, jam-resistant, cyber-secure links in the U.S. military's strategic communication chain, designed to keep the nation's highest levels of command connected, even if the unthinkable happens. ESS is set to replace the AEHF system, which has been the backbone of nuclear command and control since 2010. At the time, AEHF was a game-changer. But technology and threats have evolved. Cyber warfare, signal jamming, and anti-satellite weapons have all grown more sophisticated. ESS is the U.S. response to those changes. What makes this new system stand out is its modular design, allowing new satellites to be added without rebuilding the network. It's built to evolve with future threats, not just react to them. Boeing's version focuses on resilience, scalability, and strategic reach. There's already talk of extending ESS coverage to the Arctic, an area gaining importance due to melting ice and global competition. While SpaceX dominates headlines with reusable rockets, this deal is a quiet reminder that traditional aerospace giants like Boeing still play critical roles in national defense. In an age of increasing orbital threats, these two satellites could one day prove to be the most important machines in the sky. Block 3. Booster, a new beast emerges. Something massive is taking shape at Starbase. SpaceX has begun assembling Booster 18, the first ever Block 3 prototype. And it's already clear this isn't just a small upgrade. The new landing header tank rolled out from the Star Factory looks oversized, almost like a rocket on its own. It's wider, bulkier, and houses the downcomer pipe that feeds into the liquid oxygen header tank. Why does the size increase? Simple, more engines, more fuel, and more weight mean this booster needs extra propellant just to land safely. Block 3 is SpaceX's next leap. It's designed not only to fly, but to be mass-produced. A challenge that no other rocket in history has faced at this scale. The construction of Booster 18 marks a major milestone. Its installation into Mega Bay 1 signals that the full stack is coming together, with cryogenic testing expected in the next month or so. This isn't just a single prototype, it's the first in a fleet. Elon Musk has hinted at building 10 or more Block 3 rockets for the bays, and every step forward on Booster 18 is a step closer to the kind of cadence that Mars missions will eventually demand. The Ship 36 mystery and the flying Keo PV. When Ship 36 exploded during testing at Massey's, it wasn't just a dramatic loss. It was a puzzle SpaceX had to solve fast. Elon Musk hinted early on that a Keo PV or composite overwrapped pressure vessel might have been the culprit. These tanks are used to store high-pressure gas 
and are critical to rocket function. But when one fails under pressure, the results can be catastrophic. To understand what went wrong, engineers went straight to McGregor, SpaceX's testing site, and began recreating the conditions that led to the failure. And then, something strange happened. A massive COPV was seen shooting into the air before crashing back down. It wasn't a malfunction. It was a deliberate test to failure. By pushing the tank beyond its rated limits, they were collecting real data on how and when it fails. No simulation can replace that. It's risky, loud, and dangerous. But that's exactly how SpaceX works. They don't just theorize, they push hardware to the edge. Fixing the flaw that doomed Ship 36 is now a priority. And with Block 3 development heating up, they're making sure that mistake never happens again. Pad 2 progress and the future of mass production. At Starbase, the future is quietly being welded together. Pad 2, SpaceX's second orbital launch pad, is nearing a critical stage. One of its key components, the ship's quick disconnect arm, is being finalized at the Sanchez site. No internal plumbing work has been spotted yet, but once that starts, integration with Tower 2 won't be far behind. SpaceX seems to be saving this critical piece for the final build phase, signaling that Pad 2 is steadily moving toward operational status. Nearby, a new type of turntable is taking shape, structures that allow rocket sections to be rotated for stacking and welding. Unlike earlier designs, these turntables feature a hexagonal interior and a surrounding support ring, optimized for the upcoming Block 3 workflow. It's not just a visual change. This design is likely to make alignment and welding more precise, speeding up the entire build process. And that's the real challenge now. Mass production. Building the largest rocket ever is hard. Mass producing it even harder. SpaceX isn't just designing for flight, they're designing for scale. Block 3 marks the beginning of that shift, where the focus is no longer on reaching orbit, but on doing it regularly. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Static fires, spin primes, and the Block 3 transition. With Block 3 assembly ramping up, SpaceX faces a delicate balance. Keep testing, but don't break the only launch pad they've got. That's why Starship static fire tests are suddenly under question. Stage zero at Pad 1 is the only operational site, and reworking Massey's for full ship testing is still months away. So, what's the solution? Possibly skipping static fires entirely for ships 37 and 38. Instead, they may rely on spin prime tests, where the engine's turbo pumps are spun up without ignition. Why take that risk? Because at this stage, SpaceX doesn't need to prove everything again. They've collected valuable flight data from earlier Block 2 launches. What matters most is engine startup reliability, and spin primes can confirm that without the risk of damaging launch infrastructure. There's also a chance that launches themselves will launch themselves as the test. SpaceX has done it before, launching with minimal ground testing to preserve timelines and hardware. With Block 3 vehicles already being built, the window for traditional tests is narrowing. The focus is shifting from perfection to iteration. As long as the engines are light, the mission continues. The era of cautious pacing is over. China's bold leap toward Neptune. While most eyes are fixed on the Moon and Mars, China has set its sights much farther on Neptune. A newly proposed mission could launch as early as August 2033, marking China's first attempt to reach the outer solar system. The spacecraft, powered by a nuclear electric propulsion system, would slingshot past Jupiter and arrive at Neptune by 2038. That's just five years, a remarkably short timeline for such a distant destination. Once there, it wouldn't just orbit. 
The plan includes deploying a probe into Neptune's thick atmosphere and flying by Triton, Neptune's largest moon. Triton is a fascinating target, geologically active and potentially hiding an ocean beneath its icy surface. This would give scientists a chance to study a world we've only glimpsed once during Voyager 2's 1989 flyby. With NASA focusing on Uranus instead, China could be the first to unlock Neptune's secrets. This isn't just about science, it's about leadership. If successful, it would announce China's arrival as a serious force in deep space exploration. At a time when space is becoming more contested, Neptune might be the next great frontier. And China doesn't seem interested in waiting for anyone else to get there. Rocket Cargo Dreams and Ecological Reality The U.S. Air Force had an ambitious idea. Deliver up to 100 tons of cargo anywhere on Earth in under 90 minutes using commercial rockets. One of the key test locations, Johnston Atoll, a remote island in the Pacific. The plan was to install landing pads and conduct up to 10 test landings a year. On paper, it sounded revolutionary, turning rockets into global cargo delivery machines. But almost immediately, the project ran into a different kind of resistance. Johnston Atoll isn't just an empty patch of land. It's a wildlife refuge, home to rare nesting seabirds and fragile ecosystems. Environmental groups and scientists raised alarms, warning that rocket blasts could devastate breeding grounds. Public opposition surged, and a petition gained thousands of signatures. The required environmental review stalled. And now, the Air Force has halted the project altogether, at least at Johnston. Alternative locations like Midway or Wake Island are being considered but the message is clear. Even futuristic tech must coexist with ecological limits. Rapid cargo delivery remains a compelling vision. But as the Air Force just learned, innovation on Earth still needs to answer to the planet we live on. Space isn't just about rockets and stars. It's about choices, risks, and the invisible forces shaping our future. From secret military satellites and exploding tanks to Neptune missions and ecological pushbacks, every story is a piece of a much larger puzzle. What we build, what we test, and even where we choose to land tell us who we are and where we're headed. Whether it's SpaceX pushing the limits or China reaching farther than ever before, the pace isn't slowing down. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and keep questioning the sky above. Until next time, this is Felix, signing off from What About It.